Okay, welcome to this two week IST workshop on thermodynamics in mechanical engineering. Uh, I hope all of you have well enjoyed uh, appearing for the test today morning. Uh, I think many of you must have received a feedback uh, of your performance. Uh, that feedback, what score you got does not include the score uh, for the few questions. I think there was uh, a question near the end saying something about a process and there was a question about what is an adiabatic process. So, question 10 and question 12, these will be evaluated offline by us uh, in the few days. And in fact, the purpose of this test was to impress on you the type of questions that will come up in thermodynamics. Uh, your score is not really of uh, much interest to us, but the feedback about uh, your capabilities in thermodynamics is going to be important to us. As the course progresses, we will have some assignments. And on the last day morning, we will have a uh, second test, a formal second test. Format of the second test may be similar or it may be a traditional paper based test. We have not set it up yet, so we will set it up soon. Now, all of you should be uh, conversant with this timetable. So, today we are going to look at introductory topics and we are going to spend at basic ideas and definitions. And all of you should also have a copy or an electronic version. If you do not have it today, get it uh, by tomorrow. This is the document which is already on Moodle. It is known as sequence of topics. And all coordinators are familiar with this document and they will already have a personal copy of this, but it is also available on the Moodle sites for this course. And we will more or less follow uh, this scheme of topics or this sequence of topics. The first announcement is about the schedule. I have used the word tentative and since this course is a uh, lecture, demonstration, discussion, participation type of course, depending on how it goes, there could be a bit of a change in the schedule. Uh, one thing is more or less certain is that we would like to devote the afternoon sessions from tomorrow onwards on exercises, problem solvings and discussions. Because uh, thermodynamics is all about understanding and we will uh, confirm our understanding by being able to confidently uh, solve appropriate uh, problems in thermodynamics, discuss all topics and our concepts will become clear only when we do the exercises in a proper fashion. So, that is why you will notice that a very significant amount of time has been devoted to exercises. We also have a set of exercises which should also be available with you soon. And uh, during the exercise session, although it will be more or less offline, we will be available here for any help, any discussion. Okay. Uh, the first exercise session tomorrow, which is also topic 4, problem solving in thermodynamics and exercises on the work interaction will be very, very interactive because uh, we will be spending some time discussing this topic and we will have an illustrative example from the work interaction sheet to emphasize how we approach the solution of an exercise in thermodynamics. There is a procedure which we follow and I would like all of you to learn that procedure. Let me now come to the first 
page in the exercises and that is also our first topic uh, in this uh, introductory topics that is textbooks and other material. Question comes up because uh, each and every student and although all of us are teachers, so we are also lifelong students of some subject or the other, some branch or the other. So, the question comes up, what is a textbook? In uh, high school and maybe in junior college, each subject has a very formal textbook associated with it. That is not true when you come to engineering college, a subject or a paper will not be associated with a single textbook. There will be a number of textbooks generally uh, doing justice to the subject matter at hand. Uh, if you really want a set of textbooks, here we have a set of textbooks which are sort of my favorites and taken together they will more or less be good enough for our purpose. Some of them are absolutely physics oriented with hardly any uh, emphasis on engineering applications. Some of them are uh, proper engineering thermodynamics textbooks. These are in alphabetical order, but if you want to go in historical order, then maybe the, the book by Zimansky, a book written by a physicist, but an excellent book at least till its fourth edition. After that, perhaps it became too much physics oriented and hence uh, uh, not really useful to us. For the basic ideas, the basic principles of thermodynamics, Zimansky followed by Sears and Salinger, another physics oriented books, these two are good books. Zimansky is now, I suppose, out of print over the newer editions, but Sears and Salinger is available in an Indian edition now. And then we have a number of uh, books written by engineers and there are uh, three books listed here. Uh, one is by Professor Achyutan, one of my teachers of thermodynamics and published by Prentice All India. It is now in its second edition. Uh, another one is uh, by Sontag, Borgnak and Van Weylen. This is the current edition or recent edition of the old Van Weylen's uh, Fundamentals of Thermodynamics, uh, good mainly for engineers. And a thoroughbred engineering book on thermodynamics and also applied thermodynamics is by Moran and Shapiro, Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics. I am told there is a fifth edition now, um, but I have not yet come across it. So, I still have to refer to the fourth edition. Out of this, if you really want to understand physics, you will have to refer to Zimansky and Sears and Salinger. Uh, the other three books are essentially engineering thermodynamics with different flavors and different styles. Uh, by providing this list of books, I do not really mean that uh, you must have access to all five of these, but at least your library should have access to all five of these. And uh, as a teacher of thermodynamics, if you want to have a personal copy of any book, well, I would then recommend that you spend time with uh, a few of these books, particularly the one written by engineers. Uh, browse through, use it for a few weeks for some purpose, reference, teaching, and then decide which one is to your liking and then select that. Uh, for your personal library. Apart from the textbooks, we will also need steam tables, because as we know that there are two major working fluids that we will be coming across in thermodynamics. One is air, which we will be modeling as a ideal gas and another is steam. And for properties of steam, we have uh, to have access to steam tables and my favorite and a reasonably complete steam table for our purpose 
which I have found suitable and we have found here suitable in IIT Bombay for the last uh, maybe more than 20 years is by Mathur and Mehta. It is in reasonable detail provides uh, a very large part of what we call the state space, uh, caters to a large part of the state space and then has a reasonably detailed uh, chart also at the end. It had some other data which may or may not be useful to us. But this is something um, uh, each one of you should have a personal copy, because many of our exercises will assume that you have access to this. And when it comes to understanding properties of uh, what are known as pure substances or simple compressible substances, uh, two phase uh, gases in gas and liquid phase. Uh, we will need some illustrative tables and those illustrations will be taken by the uh, taken using the Mathur and Mehta steam tables. Now, since this is a course, the goodness of the course and the goodness of teaching is uh, decided by evaluating the course and evaluating the course means evaluating the students. So, now we come to the evaluation scheme, topic number 2, or item number 2 and I am going to evaluate you. I have begun the evaluation by conducting the first test today morning. There will be some intermediate evaluations by assignments. Assignments would essentially be problems from the exercise sheets or some additional problems which will be provided through Moodle and you will have to submit them by uploading a file on Moodle. If it is a very small answer which is expected, then it will be like one of those text boxes in the test today. You uh, write it out and say click submit. Otherwise, uh, just the way I have uploaded some files on Moodle, uh, each one of you will upload your own assignment document on Moodle. On the final day, there will be a second test and there will also be a final assignment, which you will do after the completion of the course in approximately two weeks time. The course is uh, scheduled to be over on 24th. So, maybe something like 10 July will be the 10 July or 8 July or 24th is a Friday. So, Friday after two weeks of 24th, whatever is the date in July. That will be the deadline for the final assignment and only those who submit the final assignment on schedule will receive the certificates uh, indicating that they have completed this course. Now, before we come to our discussion on thermodynamics, uh, some more announcements and that is in our schedule, we have typically four sessions every day. 9 to 11, 11 30 to 1, 2 to 3 30 and 4 to 5 30. You will notice that the first session is of 2 hours duration and the reason for that is that from tomorrow onwards in the morning when we begin at 9 and we will begin sharp at 9 within a few minutes of 9. I would like to devote some time say typically half an hour to discuss and take care of any comments, queries which come up overnight in your mind. So, uh, all participants and all coordinators are requested to uh, prepare and ask questions, be ready with the questions. The questions can be either uh, if they are simple straightforward questions, they may be emailed to me, but I am not sure. Uh, how quickly and how fast I will be able to read the email. If you email them soon after say today's uh, sessions, then I may be able to see, but if you email them late uh, in the night or early tomorrow morning, I may not uh, even see them before I come to the uh, lecture room. But be prepared with the session at 9 o'clock with any queries you have. 
I will spend approximately half an hour taking care of those queries and then I will start with the topic, the main topic of discussion that day. Apart from that, you will notice that we have four slots here known as E1, E2, E3 and F E4. These will be used uh, as peripheral slots, they are mandatory. In some slots, teachers who are uh, planning to conduct similar courses in the near future uh, will tell about those courses. In one slot, I think on the Saturday slot, Professor Fatak is going to be here. He want to discuss things with the coordinators and participants. Okay. And of course, if some additional extraneous or extra slots are needed, we will create them. Again, uh, near the end of every topic or before we break, if there is any feedback and if I can take care of that feedback, I will uh, try to do that. Okay. So, because there are 31 centers, it may be difficult for me to uh, you know accept interrupts from each and every center, but whatever is uh, reasonably possible, I will try to do. This set of lectures is not really a uh, course on thermodynamics. It is a course on uh, thermodynamics, but for teachers of thermodynamics. So, you can say this is a sort of lecture demonstration of how a course in thermodynamics is to be taught. Now, I have to keep myself conscious of the fact that all the so called participants or students in front of me are teachers of thermodynamics. Most of you would have taught the subject matter in one way or the other at least once. And those of you who are young or new in the profession would have, uh, would be ready to teach thermodynamics maybe in the following semester or the semester later. So, one of the first thing that comes up for discussion when we confront our students in thermodynamics is why are we learning thermodynamics? What is thermodynamics all about? Okay. And since nowadays a large number of students take up engineering, many of them simply because of uh, well peer pressure or mob mentality, many of them may not even realize what mechanical engineering is all about. I can argue backwards and say many of them will not realize what engineering is all about. But let us not go that much backwards, since our name of the subject is thermodynamics in mechanical engineering. Uh, we should realize and we should make the students realize what mechanical engineering is all about. And then the place of thermodynamics in mechanical engineering. And then we come to the idea of what thermodynamics is about after looking at the scheme of thermodynamics, scheme of thermal engineering and scheme of mechanical engineering. So, let us first try to see what mechanical engineering is about. This is something which comes up for discussion whenever we take up the subject of thermodynamics. And the answer to this, I think many of us should know, but I try to explain it to students and which uh, generally is appreciated by students is that mechanical engineering is about machines. Well, that is easier said than explained. And then we say that these machines are doing various types of things on one side we have natural resources, 
fuels, wind, solar energy, minerals, water flowing, monsoon, whatever. And on the other side is us, humans. So, mechanical engineering somehow gets linked to natural resources and us humans in the following way. The machines with which we are concerned do many things and the machines are of various kinds. There are some machines which consume natural resources, we call them fuels typically and produce power or convert them into useful energy like electricity. And what is this power used for? Part of this power will be used for driving such some machines. And of course, some machines will be used for manufacturing or producing these machines. These machines come out of nowhere, do not come out of nowhere. We need to manufacture or create or produce those machines. So, there are machines, some of them may call machine tools or fabricating machines or whatever, but machines which produce machines, machines which convert natural resources into power which is used to drive machines of all kinds. And machines which help create a good and comfortable life for us human beings. This may not be the complete scheme of mechanical engineering, but I think the essence of mechanical engineering is laid out here. What do you mean by help create a good and comfortable life for us? Well, it cools our rooms by air conditioning it. On wintry days, it heats up water for us, so that we can take our bath comfortably. It helps us move from one place to another, providing transport. It helps uh, machines and other engineers fabricate all sorts of things right from mobile phones, laptops, lamps, anything which you have. Okay. Finally, help create a good and comfortable life for us. So, this is the scheme of machines and which is the subject matter of mechanical engineering. If you look at it, more or less all schemes of uh, mechanical engineering fit here. Machines which pump water, they are also machines which handle power or pump water to put in the overhead tanks to have a continuous water supply for us. Machines which take uh, water at a height and produce power, hydraulic machines, they are also of this kind. Now, in this scheme of things, there is one scheme of thing which is thermal engineering. You will notice that many of the natural resources or a major chunk of natural resources is what we call fuels. And fuels are usually burnt or undergo a process of combustion releasing heat. And this thermal energy is converted by many machines into useful mechanical power, which drives a shaft, which in turn will drive a pump or drive a car or a drive a locomotive or uh, drive a electrical generator, which will produce electricity. So, this conversion of thermal en energy into mechanical energy and managing all that is the subject matter of thermal engineering. All power plants, pumps, 
refrigerators, air conditioners, they all come in the purview of thermal engineering. Okay. And if you look at mechanical engineering, thermal engineering which looks at the give and take between machines on one hand and natural resources and thermal energy on the other hand is one aspect. Manufacturing technology or production engineering is another aspect of mechanical engineering. And the third aspect of mechanical engineering is our uh, ability and imagination to create those machines, the design of these machines. So, design engineering is also a part of mechanical engineering. And these machines come out, come out of nowhere these machines have to be built of some materials, some metal, some plastic, wood, whatever. So, materials from which these machines are built, that part is also of interest to mechanical engineering. So, these aspects, design engineering, materials which are used by designers, and which are used by fabricators to produce machines and machines that handle thermal energy, thermal engineering. These are major parts of mechanical engineering. Now, when it comes to thermal engineering, The basic science, absolute basic science of thermal engineering is thermodynamics. This is just to tell you what thermodynamics is all about. Definition of thermodynamics will come to later. But thermal engineering is not just thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the basic heart, but then to move heat from one place to another quite often we use fluids. So, fluid mechanics for transport of fluid and energy associated with fluid, thermal or otherwise, the next topic or next subject would be fluid mechanics. Then transfer of heat through any type of materials, it is concern of the subject called heat transfer. And if you look at thermodynamics, fluid mechanics and heat transfer is the basic, let me say tripod on which thermal engineering is based. And later on it comes to more detailed phenomena like combustion. and applications as in power plants of various kinds and refrigeration plant of various kinds. So, when you learn thermodynamics, you are learning one of the absolute foundation subjects in thermal engineering. And that is the reason why thermodynamics is considered an important subject. And uh, those who are good in thermodynamics will tend to be good in the other parts of thermal engineering. Okay. Thermal engineering is only one part of mechanical engineering. Just the way we study thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, in thermal engineering the subjects similarly there will be parallel subjects in design engineering of equal importance. For example, here you will have solid mechanics, 
and then you will have stress analysis, then you will have kinematics, dynamics and what not. In a similar way, we have thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer and the subjects which follow. And of course, you can fill up this matrix by writing down other aspects of mechanical engineering and filling up the courses and subjects which are important out there. Since thermodynamics is a basic science, concerns itself not only with mechanical engineering, but it concerns itself with many other branches of science and engineering. Because if you look at the question, what is it about? What is the science of thermodynamics? What does it discuss? Then the answer turns out to be the following. Thermodynamics is about energy. Not, not just about energy, but what does this energy do? Whenever energy gets transferred, or transported from one system to another. Now, again there are some words here, which we have not yet properly defined, but we are using it like system. We will define these as we proceed then we say that thermodynamics is involved. And since the subject of energy and its involvement with various systems is not only of interest to mechanical engineers, but it is of interest to any science or any branch of engineering, which somehow requires to handle energy. We know energy cannot be created, it can only be handled, transferred, transformed and utilized. So, there are various branches of science and engineering, which will look at thermodynamics as a science of interest to them. And because of this, historically thermodynamics has been contributed to by physicists, chemists and by engineers, particularly mech engineers. Of course, when the ideas of thermodynamics developed in engineering, uh, so many different branches of specialization in engineering had not been created. So, it was essentially mech engineers, later on chemical engineers and chemists contributed to it. But when it comes to utilizing the science of thermodynamics, it is utilized by many branches of engineering not just mechanical, but mainly mechanical, chemical, aerospace, metallurgy and materials, what you have. It is also used by many scientists. 
it is used by physics, it is used by chemists, it is used by many other material scientists, even biologists these days. Not only that, when the science of thermodynamics became formalized, mathematicians contributed to it. And in fact, mathematicians like Cara Theodori and Giles have provided us proper and logical foundations of thermodynamics. So, what we have done so far is looked at the science of thermodynamics. We started off by looking at mechanical engineering, what is it about? Then we looked at thermal engineering and looked at the thermodynamic as the basic part of thermal engineering among mechanical engineering and then we looked at what is thermodynamics. So, if we want to define thermodynamics, maybe we can define it as the science that looks at the way energy behaves, particularly when it is transferred from one system to another. And these transfers we will later classify as work transfer and heat transfer, but the basic idea is both of these are energy transfers. Then we notice that thermodynamics is not the, uh, the unique uh, domain of someone. It is contributed to by different types of scientists and engineers and it is used also by a large number of sciences and a large number of branches of engineering. Even mathematicians have entered the picture. If you look at our topics, if you want to study thermodynamics, what are the prerequisites? or precursors, what you should study before you study thermodynamics, at least the way we are learning thermodynamics. This list is not exhaustive. Let me say, high school, physics and chemistry. and two, let me put it as the calculus part of mathematics. Particularly, we will be using differentiation, including partial derivatives. We will be using some coordinate geometry. some integration and in particular what are known as exact differentials. This exact differentials topic is of particularly interest in thermodynamics. We will see that quite a few places this exact differential plays an important role in thermodynamics. If you are comfortable with these topics, there should not be any difficulty in embarking on a study of thermodynamics. And of course, the following subjects you all know fluid mech, heat transfer, and then large number of applied circuits. We close our uh, 
absolute introductory discussion of topics by uh, naming some contributors, because although we have said that these are our textbooks, these textbooks in turn um, have been based on the work of others who have developed thermodynamics. So, the list of contributors to thermodynamics, it is something we should know about. Who are the contributors of thermodynamics? The list will be exhaustive, but I want to write some names which are familiar to us, some of them may not be familiar to all of you. If you look at the history of thermodynamics, go back in history, you will realize that during the development of the human race or human behavior or what Bronowski calls the ascent of man. fire played an important role. In fact, there is a cranky author, British author who reviews cars. He has a very pithy statement. He said that till about 1820, in the two million years before that, human beings discovered just three useful things. Number one, the fact that wood floats, number two fire and number three the horse. And if you notice horse is something about power, the first energy that human extracted in some way, the early energy was from the horse and we still uh, respect that by having a traditional unit called horse power. Well, wood floats has nothing to do with energy, but it is part of mechanical engineering because it allowed us to be transported across water bodies. And fire, well I think the discovery of usefulness of fire and the dangers of fire, the ability, the growth of the ability to control fire, create it, control it and finally douse it was perhaps the basic scheme of thermal engineering historically. The science of thermodynamics must have germinated at that time. Who were those people who helped us understand fire? We do not know. They will remain in the grayness of history. Then much, much later came an engineer called Carnot. And his idea that there could be, he worked with steam engines, which were used to pump water out of mines and transport mined stuff out of the mine. And he started thinking about how good a steam engine could be. And he came up with ideas of a reversible steam engine maximum efficiency and such ideas that there is a maximum efficiency and anything beyond that may not be possible is due to Carnot. His ideas are today encompassed in the second law of thermodynamics. But if you go back in history, the first proper contribution to the science of thermodynamics perhaps came from Carnot in a form which today we call the second law of thermodynamics. We do not take his statement as the basic statement of thermodynamics, his statement we prove using our ideas of second law, we call it the Carnot theorem, we do not call it the Carnot law. Okay. But because of that contribution, I would like to put Carnot at the head of named people who have contributed to thermodynamics. After that, we have a number of contributors and even if I use 10 pages, 
uh, that will not be sufficient. We have uh, physicists like Joule, Kelvin, Rumford, we have chemists like Gibbs, we have engineers like Carnot, Clausius, Rankin, modern day people like Keenan, pure physicists like Planck, in some way Boltzmann, of course more of a physical and chemical contribution rather than engineering contribution. And we have mathematicians like Kara Theodori and Gilles, I think G I L E S. All of these in some way or the other have contributed to thermodynamics. And if you take any oldish thermodynamics book, I am sure you will find their uh, portraits and brief uh, life sketches in those. If I get some information, I will put it up on the Moodle for participants, so they can look at it. Now that brings us to the end of our introductory topics.